If you ask me, why do I stand here so unafraid of everything around me? Proudly I would say, I am a Muslim. If you ask her, why does she dress that way, all covered up in a world that gives it all away? Proudly she would say, I am a Muslim. Are you, Abu, tonight, right here, are you a good person? And I, I ask that with this background. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 3, you've got to be a beggar to get any help from God, a spiritual beggar. He said in Luke 4, 18, you've got to be blind. In John 8, 44, he said, you're a child of Satan when you come into the world. In John 7, 7, he said, everyone who comes into this world hates me. That's a, and there, there's others, I could, I could go on listing them, I'm sure maybe you know them as well. I look at me and I say, Seth is bad. If there's anything good in here, it's because of Jesus, not me. I'm a bad guy. And I'm going to preach tomorrow at a church full of really bad people, but it looks like I'm in a room full of pretty good chaps. Hey, these guys are, Allah's going to be happy with them. I'll tell you, I know my heart, he's not going to be happy with me. I'm really bad. Can you? It seems like Islam makes you very proud. Thank you. No, I don't agree with that. I would say, Brother Seth, you are a beautiful guy. You must have beautiful qualities in you. You must have admirable qualities in you. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 21. The righteousness of the righteous. I'm not saying. The Bible calls some people righteous. Not me. Not me. Not bad chaps, sir. Not bad chaps. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Read the Bible. Let's take into consideration the context, the general context outlined throughout the Bible. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. The soul that sinneth it shall die. There is a clear difference in the sight of God between one who is righteous and one who is wicked. I don't say that. The answer is in the Bible itself. Thank you. You said there is a, a contradict between Jesus and, uh, and Paul. To me, it's not contradict. I, I understand very clearly what Jesus said clearly. And what Paul said clearly, to me, when I'm reading, I cannot find that things. I thank you. Jesus says something in his life. He says something quite clearly, coherently. He says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law. Paul says, Jesus abolished the law in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 15. So you see a clear-cut contradiction. If I did that, if I opened to Surah 9, and I showed verse, I had 29, 37, and I showed other places, I said, see, all Muslims do this, this, this. I, I'm not saying that. But if I did, you would probably say, whoa, I'm kind of feeling that way right now with your treatment of the scriptures. I'd appreciate it if you could work on that. Thank you. This is the only book on the face of the earth which actually gives us an acid test, a falsification test. The Quran states in chapter 4 verse 82, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا Do they not consider the Quran with thought with care, the Quran is appealing to you, my brother. It's asking you to study it, to look into it, to look and study it. And the Quran says, had it been from other than God, you would find in it many discrepancies, many contradictions. The Quran doesn't have any contradictions. The Quran doesn't make a single error because it is what we believe to be the word of Almighty God. 
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My name is Mohammed Guvadia and I'm your chair this evening. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you this evening to a presentation Jesus Christ in Islam by Molana Abu Bakr Aku. Tonight's effort is a collaboration between the IPCI and the Aku family. I think the questions that we're going to be asking tonight is who is Jesus Christ? What does he mean for Muslims? And what does he mean for Christians? And why are two of the world's major religions competing for his good name and entitlement? So those are the questions that we'll be asking. The format for this evening will be two Quran recitations, a 45-minute presentation by Abu Bakr Akko, and then we'll be fielding some questions and answers from you this evening. This is just a reminder that tonight's tone will be cordial and the aim would be to build bridges between Islam and Christianity. Our first Quran reciter would be Muhammad Mlazi, who hails from Impumalanga, his Isi Swati. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله لا يستحي أن يضرب مثلا ما مثلا ما بعوضة فما فوقها فأما الذين آمنوا Jazakallah for that. Just a reminder for those people who do not know, these Qaris have actually memorized the whole Quran, 6,600 odd ayats in the Quran. They've memorized them from cover to cover. The second Qari reciter will be Muhammad Yusuf, who also hails from Islamic University in Newcastle. 